Hey, welcome back to Daily Flash. I'm Mitch English. Our next guest has experienced the lowest of lows and highs of highs in his professional and even professional and personal life. Today, he's here to tell us about how we can actually change our mindset and get back to, and you want to say it with me, to the top, never stop. Woo. Actor and radio personality Carlos Navarro joins us now to share his personal journey. It's a very important one too, because I love it. Uh, as I as I have seen you from uh, geez, uh, at least 15 years ago to where you are now, and you still have that great attitude. Is that attitude that you've had kind of kept you along, or did you have to develop what you have right now? I had to develop it. Yeah. My attitude, my energy has always been here. But it, was, right, right, yeah. but it was a shotgun class as opposed to a sniper bullet, which I feel I have now. I would just be energy and that got me into trouble. It was indiscriminate path that I would go down. And so as I developed what I needed, yes, it became much more strategic uh -huh. and tactful and uh, powerful, to be honest. All right, you talk to businesses and organizations now, but to give an idea of like where you, you were and where you are now, obviously with Hawkeye on Monsters for, you know, the number one radio show in the, here in Orlando on Walking Dead. And you've really, a lot of people probably wrote you off a, a while back saying, well, you know, you know, forgive me, but thinking, Please. well, he's just gonna be a hood, a hood yeah, and he's yeah. not gonna um, wind up much. And I think that's what's motivating when I hear your story. Share some of that with us. Thank you, Mitch, yeah. Um, yeah, I can clearly remember people looking at me and saying, you're done. Yeah. Not people not wanting to hire me. I'd really done it to myself. And the second I took ownership of it, and one thing that I always coach people on, I was a boy along doing kind of crazy things, but the second I decided to make a change in my life, that's when I became really a man. And that's what I say, men make decisions, boys make choices. So when I made the decision like, yo, I need to own up for the stupidity that I've done, that was a, a changing point. And so I really learned to not be boastful to the people, and I know who you are, <laughs> who said I was done. You and you and you. Um, and really uh, look at life a little bit differently and respond to things as opposed to react to things. So um, I'm very, very grateful to where I'm at right now with it. And with that, did you feel that it was something that like a 12 step thing? I mean, you mm. know, a lot of people kind of related to that as far as changing lives. I mean, did you encompass some of that or was <laughs> it just you know, listening to other people or just coming to that realization? That's a great question because I never thought about that. I was court ordered because I was arrested <laughs> three times to go to AA, to go to therapy. I can't be talking about these things saying, oh, I've never done this stuff right. before. I went to that bottom. And so yes, I do grab some from 12 step. I do grab some from, from religious uh, things. I grab some from my past. And then the massive amount of books and, and just things that I've read to help. And then I create this kind of passion project to the top. Yeah you know, methodology, if you will. You know, and I, I know you always are always positive and, and number one, quick, probably the fastest thinking person oh, I've ever known. Thank you, like, thank you. Like, how did you come up with it that way? <laughs> but, but you're always positive with that, um, with your answers. And you say passion project. Generally, when people, you hear that in Hollywood, oh, it's my passion project, mm -hmm. where I just something we want to do. But this is really yeah. what you encompass in your presentations and such. Tell yeah. us about that. What is the passion project? The passion project has been kind of my life. I never gave up my entertainment, even when I got fired from radio, even when I never booked any acting gig, even when, like I said, you knew before, I was forgotten about. But I kept my passion going. So I would get a little win. I'd book a TV show. I'd book a little commercial. And that was my passion. And I, but I had to keep a nine to five. I had to be a salesperson. I had yeah. to get my real estate license. I had to do all these things. So what I found is as long as I've had that passion in my life, it has reduced my anxiety during tough times. Okay. It has not made me feel guilty as to what I could have been. And as long as you're putting in a little bit, just a little bit to your passion every day, I promise you, you're gonna feel so much better. And that's kind of what I teach. And you're talking about like 15, 20 minutes a day or yeah, just as little as that. Do you understand, Mitch, people to put zero into their lives. They give up playing guitar when they're uh, 10 years old or 20 yeah. years old because they can't make a living out of it, not knowing they could go to their church and play and really get that feel, but still be an accountant. They give up writing a book because of the limiting beliefs. Who's gonna read my book? Who am I? Yeah. J.K. Rowling, if she would have said that, nobody would ever heard about it. This is true. And, uh, Everybody has that in them. Now, and you say that's probably the big, when you, you're in front of uh, big organizations and businesses and such, you talk about the, the biggest problem that you see is what? A limiting belief. Okay. And, and that goes along with what you yes. just Yes. Now, do you, I like, uh, when I say limiting belief, what does that mean to you? I think that you don't believe you can accomplish something. Oh, yes. That's a general term. But a limiting belief is as simple as you wake up in the morning, you stub your toe, oh, 
I'm gonna have a bad day today. Okay. It could be as something as I bad. I'm not good at math. Oh, a big one. The biggest one is this, Mitch, and you will love this because you we're brothers in this. I'm not a morning person. <laughs> Remember this right now. You say you're not a morning person. Do you think that helps you or do you think that hurts you? That is a limiting belief. Okay. And people will wear it on their shoulder. And then I ask them, do you think that helps you or hurts you being a morning person? They immediately go, hurts me. And it's a limiting, it's a very simple, it doesn't mean I'm a horrible person, yeah. but that limiting belief is gonna stop you from getting up early to go to that tryout, to that audition, because all the good stuff happens in the morning. Well, I think the, the word, the action word, they're limiting, it's limiting. Yes. You just put a limit on yourself, right? And it's a belief, and yeah. what is a belief? It's a long-held series of thoughts that you think is a fact. Very cool, yeah. And you develop it and you believe it That's that way. It. That's actually a good point. Well, speaking of uh, the, when you're, in, you're talking to organizations and groups, and you're talking about creative thinking, you're actually embracing this chat GPT. Oh and I got, I got to hear about this, man. <laughs> How so? How is this going to be a good thing? I think we're looking at the greatest invention in the series of inventions. That is not hyperbole. Uh -huh. It's a superpower. I talk to it like Jarvis, like Iron Man talks to Jarvis, okay. okay? When I think of social media, now when I have an idea, I talk to it and it helps me formulate it. And then I take that Facebook post and I turn it into three Twitter posts. And then I take that Twitter post and I turn it into Instagram. That's one. When I want to, oh, I had a meeting with a friendly person the other day. Let me send him a message. I literally teach it as part of the workshop. Yeah. As, an, as another consultation part. I find that fascinating too, because you, you know, we hear so much negative about that, and that you want to keep every negative out of your, your, your whole vernacular. Well, there is one part of it, and I'll Tell say this, so you'll remember this line. A human, uh, AI will not take your job, but a human that masters AI will take your job. Very good stuff, and if you want to book Carlos and find out more information, we got a website for you. You can check out to the top, neverstop.com. We'll have links on our website as well, dailyflashshow.com. That energy, dude. Thank Bring you, Bring it back Mitch. here. You're welcome here Thank anytime. you. That was awesome, man. Thank you. We'll have more after this.